Hello everyone, this is Jacob Ames, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to learn how to create a bounding box for any solid body, regardless of how it's been created or how it's going to be used. This is a great tool for preparing a part for packaging, among other design needs, and it's significantly easier to use than trying to manually add and keep track of reference dimensions. So we're starting off today with a fairly organic solid model. You can see a dome feature at the top as well as a shelf feature at the bottom. And this is a loft with spline profiles so the dimensions aren't very regular along the outside. And having a bounding box for this part might be pretty valuable. So we can create a bounding box fairly simply, but the tool itself is buried within Weldment's commands. So we'll need to add a Weldment feature first. From the Weldments tab, I'll simply choose Weldment, adding that feature into the design tree. But more importantly, we now have a cut list item near the top of the tree. Right-clicking this and updating it uh, is the uh, appropriate first step to start here. This is going to result in a subfolder from which we can right-click and choose to create a bounding box. If we open up that folder once it's generated, we'll see that we now have a 3D sketch representing our bounding box, and a left-click will display that on the screen for us. Now this is nice to see visually, uh, but more importantly, this bounding box has actually generated several cut list properties that we can leverage in our drawings. If you right click the cut list item folder and choose properties, you'll see the cut list properties dialog where you'll find properties for material, quantity, description, as well as all of your bounding box characteristics like thickness, width, length, and even volume. So we can leverage these in our drawings just like traditional file properties, although they are separate, so you won't find them in your file properties from the standard toolbar. We're going to move over to a drawing with an isometric view of this part within it. Adding a note is uh, the standard process, so we'll choose the note command from the annotations tab. And when we're using our preview to place our note, the trick here is to make sure that you're actually hovering over model geometry within the drawing view, and you'll see a leader extend from that note when you're in the appropriate uh, spot. And this is going to ensure that you can use those cut list item properties. Once we've placed that note, we'll link a property like we normally do, making sure to use model found here. Instead of current drawing view, however, we're going to use the drop down and use a new option that you may not have seen before component to which the annotation is attached. This is going to allow us to use those cut list properties and link them into our drawing. And now under property name, you'll see those same properties that we just reviewed. So for this video, uh, we'll go ahead and choose length. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but we'll say OK. And you'll see that the current value is 175.1. So just to make sure that these are updating properly, we'll switch back to the model. I'm going to make a quick adjustment to a plane that was used to construct this, so we'll just do a quick drag here to shorten this up a bit. It's going to give us a dialog letting us know that the bounding boxes are out of sync now, so we want to go ahead and say yes to update this. Once that's done, we can switch back to the drawing, and you'll see that that note has updated parametrically. So looks pretty good. Uh, at this point, we can remove that leader if we no longer wish to see it. Simply select it and choose the note leader option, and you can move that note wherever you'd like uh, without worrying about the contents of that note changing. So in today's video, we learned how to create a bounding box for any solid body by leveraging the weldment feature, and we also explored how to use the properties resulting from creating that bounding box parametrically in a drawing. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe, or visit us at hawkridgesys.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.